I know you can't see me that well. I can tell already. <laughs> so I'm going to get up and move. I want it to be comfortable so I wouldn't be all around, all over the place with my energy. Can you see Costa Rica in the back, back there? You see it? The mountains, you may even hear a little drum. All right, I'm so so happy to um, to be with you uh, today. I'm coming broadcasting live uh, here from Costa Rica, the Central Valley of Costa Rica, and um, I am Latanya Taylor, affectionately known as the Rev Coach, the Juicy Spirit Mama, the Priestess of Passion, and all of that good 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 things. So. Um, I help black women heal their heart and transform their relationship with sex, love, and money um, and bridge the relationship between themselves and their relationship with the divine, with God. And I think I did better with my introduction uh, today uh, rather than ju jumping right on in there. Uh, so I want you to see Costa Rica, but I also want you to see me. <laughs> I'm hoping that while I'm talking to you today that the um, the horses, you'll get a chance to see the horses that I love uh, that come up and uh, sit with, with me sometimes. Um, well, every morning, actually, um, I, I don't know how I miss them this morning. We, we've managed to attract the uh, cat, horses. There's two dogs on the property. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so that would be apropos for us to talk about, do I believe in magic? You know, I, I learned that a lot of my, sometimes my, my Christian posse, that they don't really know how to take me. They don't really know how to position me. Um, certainly my Muslim folks, um, because we, we, get, we get taught to fear certain things, certain words, so, certain verbiage. And so now Essence Magazine just did an article on Black Girl, Mag uh, uh, Black Girl Magic. And um, I posted it in Good Girls Gone Goddess. Not many sisters commented on it because I think that we are still trying to understand what that really means, what our magic is. So I want to answer the question since we're coming out, <laughs> do I believe in magic? But I want to position the question. Um, because what you know before I even answer the question I want to position why you believe in magic don't even worry about whether I believe in magic or not deal with you you know how that little baby said daddy you worry about yourself <laughs> you know have you all seen that the, 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 you worry about yourself <laughs> I love that but um, anywho uh, you know, and let me just also position this. Today I talked about uh, position to prosper on the Super Soul Sister Sunday call. And there was a fire energy that moved on that call through me. I don't, I don't even remember everything that I said that flowed through me um, this morning. If you are new to the community, you want to try to listen to, to it. It is posted in Good Girls Gone Goddess. So... I, I don't need, I, I was going to try to share with you all again, but mm -mm, it's not going to happen like that. So I'm going to proceed with thus say it the Lord. So let me just say this about do I believe in magic? First of all, let's unpack that word belief. <laughs> we use that word a whole lot about, you know, we take pride in being believers. And we are out of season because this is the age of knowing. That's why it's called the age of information. Belief is the absence of knowledge. It is the absence of knowing. So the answer is dual. I don't believe in magic. No, I don't believe in magic. In fact, I'm working on not believing in a lot of things but moving into knowing you see you, you see some of you all who know the text you know that when you 
and I'm using the word to talk about a word, but when we talk about knowing in the spiritual sense, knowing when, when, when it says in the Bible to know something, he knew her. It means that it is to have intercourse with. It means that you got to enter into a thing or a thing enters into you. It means that you have to go into a journey. And, and, and I, I've talked a lot about us being tribal people. Melanated people that I'm talking to are tribal people. And in us being tribal people, we didn't do a whole lot of believing. We, we knew because we were an experiential people. We had people that taught us. We were still, we, we knew who we were cosmically. See, because we come from a line. When it's, not, it's not just our genetics. It is also who we are because who, who were you? Who, who do you come from? That's what I talked about on the call, on the call today. And I don't want to, I might activate that thing again, so I don't want to, I don't want to go there. But, so do I believe in magic? So let's just put a pause right there on this thing called belief. Thank you all that's coming. I, I try not to get into the comments too much, but I thank you for commenting. So belief is the absence of, of magic. I know black girl magic. I know black girl magic because black girl magic is a polarity. Black girl magic is the light and the dark black girl magic is reverent and irreverent black girl magic is sacred and profane black girl magic is source energy black girl magic is source energy and yes it's easy to reject that which you do not know first it's called cognitive dissonance it's easy to reject it and I probably would be doing the normal thing as well but I, I'm here to call you out of just being normal because black girl magic is your extraordinary self. I'll get into that in a minute. And so in order to know something, you have to have a relationship with it. And so that's why I said it as a joke, but the little video said, Daddy, you were about yourself. <laughs> why? Because we spend so much time being told how to mind our business that we don't mind our business and we don't mind dig into who we are. And then we want to go out and do business and we want to do business broken. And that's why I position it this way. Do I believe in magic? Now, let me tell you why you believe in magic, too. Because if you are churched, if you're in a mosque, if you are in African traditional religion, you believe in magic. The church disguises its magic because it's, and it causes something else has made it safe for you because there are rituals in the church. There are protocols in the church. And, and, and why? Where did those protocols come from? Where did those rituals come from? Well, most of them came from man, huh? Because most of us are practicing Paul anity, not Christianity. And Christianity is something that is experience. It is not something that is 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 taught and 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 behavior um, be monitored behavior and performance and uh, genie rub a genie. If I dance, if I if I if I raise my hands high enough, if I hoop hard enough, then it's gonna get me to God. Come on now, the veil is up. The veil is off. We should not be surprised by anything we see because we it, it it's an institution. All institu all institutions in this season will be exposed. But anyway, I I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Traditions are rituals. So when you fix your black eyed peas and your cabbage greens and your corn cornbread and you do your, your little thing on New Year's, my mama used to say, but I, I don't really care for black eyed peas that much. I know I, I know now because um, of how, you know, I, I know I know how to cook, so I know how to season them and I and I like them. But at first I, I'm not it's not my favorite bean and I love beans. If you're from the country, you grow up eating beans and things like that, right? And so I'm a country Mississippi girl for the most part. New Orleans is my second home, my heart town, as I like to call it. But if you're from the South, you know what I'm talking about. My mama used to say, baby, have you some black eyed peas in your house? Have you some cabbage in your house? Why? Why? My mother may not know. Your, your mother and your father may not know that they believed in magic. 
while the, while they teach you against witchcraft. Because now you have people that get up and teach about witches and warlocks, but then what are you doing when you talk about the prophet? When you talk about a prophetic pro prophetic anointing, when you talk about the spirit the spiritual gifts. Huh? Talk to me. So how can we condemn anybody that's talking about magic? Huh? Talk to me. What do you do when you go to the altar? What do you do when you pray? I'm sorry if I, if I sound a little, little bit more aggressive, a little bit more passionate today. It's because I still got that oil on me from this morning. <laughs> Traditions are rituals, all of them. Huh? So you believe in magic. Quit playing. You believe in magic. You believe in magic when you want a, 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 um, a man to rescue you, to be your Prince Charming. Because so you don't have to deal with your life. Today I talked about Boaz to go revisit the study of Boaz. You talking about you want you a Boaz man. But check this out. Ruth walked in a certain anointing. She already was positioned to prosper. But we give all our credit away. We give it away when we, we, we because as women we have amnesia. We have amnesia. We, black women in particular. We have forgotten who we are. We have bumped our heads, forgotten who we are. So what do you do with people who have amnesia? You give them context clues. You give them context clues. Maybe they work and maybe they don't. And then something pops in, something you starts to remember. Sisters, we have to be more patient. You know what? Let me say what else. I, black girl magic is us working together. But black girl magic is collaboration, not competition. The new business model today is not you competing like men, like little men, to see how I can get my shit out there, how I can get the stage, how I can get how I can get the microphone, how I can get the biggest poster and the biggest banner, and I can take take a, 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 a what do you call that a photo shoot. And, I, and, and now I have something out there. No, 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 no. Because, see, there's power in our collaborative cooperation as women. And so that's why it's easy for you all to go into these groups and then you don't, you don't say anything, you don't show up, because it's been comfortable for you to show up. Why? Because it's been uncomfortable being a, black, a magical black woman. It's been uncomfortable, and that's in your genetics. It's in your genetics to, to not want to be Henrietta Lacks because the black woman has been martyred and sacrificed and sacrificing for far too long. It's been normal to sacrifice. And yeah, we talk a good game, but we know our muscle is stronger sacrificing than our muscle is diving into and minding our business, minding ourselves, finding ourselves. But let me tell you what I do believe in. I really, when you study spiritual technology, when you study spiritual, when you study spiritual um, psychology, <clears throat> you, you grow up from baby food. Because believing in magic is a sense of baby food, a little bit of baby food. And you start to understand yourself as the miracle. There's a difference between magic and miracles. See, let me, let me, let me make it. Let me, let me do a little pause right here. The dictionary says that magic is the art of, of, uh, of, of producing illusions as entertainment. Uh huh. So many of us want to be entertained. We want to go to church to be entertained. And that's why it's temporary. That's why you back at the altar crying about the same thing because you haven't done your work. We, 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 we want to be entertained. We want to check out, tune out. We don't want to tap into it. Because sometimes you, that's why I said that our magic has a polarity, right? It, because the reason why it's a polarity is because we have been taught to believe in many illusions. Many illusions that show up and feel real. And then we cre recreate and recycle the experience over and over again. That's why I'm calling y'all out so that we can be an interruption. And so what if this is deep? I get so tired of sometimes people talking about, girl, you so deep. Oh, I don't want to go that deep. What, what are you saying? You're declaring to the universe, I want to dwell on the surface. I want to be a surface dweller. No, dive into the deep. Dive into the deep. 
That's when you move from the baby food into the miracle working consciousness, the Christ consciousness. I believe in miracles. I know miracles. The, the, the miracles, the reason why I know miracles is because the miracle is the shift in perception. Every time you have a shift in perception, that is a miracle. Miracle miracles are those things that, that happen naturally and they're unexplainable by man. We know miracles. It's in our genetics. It's in our DNA. That's why they keep studying the pyramids to try to figure out how they did it. Yes, miracles, magic, all this stuff. It, the article said it kind of gives us a superhuman feel. We are superhuman. You are a superhero, black woman. You have superpowers. Yes, you do. And you know you do. You know you have superpowers. But it's okay, you can own your magic and walk in your miracles because the miracles begin to happen daily when we get out of our own way. And so come out, come out on your, on your black girl magic. Start there, investigate your black girl magic. Explore your black girl magic. Explore your, even your pain points and your pain body. Who are you? <laughs> Miracles are extraordinary events in the physical that surpass all known human and natural powers. You are a miracle. You have surpassed all known and natural powers. Because yes, we have a legacy that we have, that we oftentimes, we want to attach ourselves to, we want to defend, we, we want to fight. This morning I talked about positions. See, because there's a science in holding positions and fighting all the time. I understand what it means to be an activist. I have been an activist. But the law says, the spiritual law said that whatever you focus your attention on, it grows. So, okay, I get that you're an advocate. For domestic violence. I get that you are an advocate for human trafficking. I get that. I get the things that we are advocates for. But sometimes we hold the position of what we are against and not take a stand just as strong and just as powerful on what we are for. There was a time in my life where I felt so betrayed by authority in my family then later on because see our the origin of, of of us denying our magic begins very very early and then we start to not believe in a lot of things we we need people to prove themselves and 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 we and and, and we set up positions for for because you really want to know that you're not going to leave me. You're not going to hurt me. You're not going to judge me. You're not going to betray me. And we want to know more than that, that I am safe. It is safe to be me. It has not been safe to be a black woman, particularly in the West. But as I live abroad and have conversations with people abroad, you would be surprised at the, the, um, the experience of people in China, the black people that are living in China and they we're we're like a phenomenon can i touch your hair before they before they ask real for permission the angry black woman is a prototype and it's it's a prototype that is nurtured by our denial our denial of magic and our unwillingness to walk in the miracle working consciousness that we are I understand and respect those of you who hold a position from academia. And I understand that, hey, I may, I may not even look, I, I'm not suited up and all of that, but I can go corporate, I can do all of that, I've done that. This is the free me. <laughs> there are many shades of me. There are many shades of goddess. There are many shades of you. And so, as I was saying, when, when I first was, was um, disappointed and heartbroken from my own journey, from my own experience, I was calling it other things. See, you call your daddy-lessness 
the fatherlessness syndrome. We call these the molestations that we have experienced. I I have had that experience for me. When when a woman has been traumatized, she starts to not believe in her magic, much less miracles. Especially if you told. I was a little black girl who told. And when I didn't get the response from the authorities in my life that I told, I thought something was wrong with me. I thought I was worthless. So our lack, our struggle with our money, it is not about your budget. It's not about the pay raise. I was, I, I began my walk, I called a lot of the things that turn off my magic other things and that is what that is the journey a lot of times that we don't want to walk we don't want to revisit the pain <clears throat> not not individually it's easier to do it collectively it's easy to fight for something for somebody else and all the time not have the same kind of fight for yourself but I'm here to tell those of you who are on this path of goddess, you cannot be in no goddess feminine energy and hate your womanhood. You cannot even access that magic, the miracle working consciousness that you are and hate women. I thank God that my sister was my safe place. She was my she stood for me and sometimes as a woman we just want another woman to stand for us to witness us not come and tell us tell us nothing you know judge us I mean how many times has your heart been broken how many times have you chosen the wrong lover how, how many times have, have you made a, a choice or a decision that you weren't proud of and that causes many of us to go deeper into our shell or we overachieve because we hide behind our overachievement as well. Your degrees cannot save you, boo. Your red bottoms cannot save you if your heart is black. I'm pausing because I'm only talking to the women who are deciding I will not die an unlived life. That I am worth the risk to find out about my own magic. I'm talking to the women who already know that you are extraordinary. See, because if you know you're extraordinary, that can't be something you just say. Because not being normal, it has a price. Not being, having superpowers has a price. See, when you go study the, 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 the story of Superman, he had, yes, he was adopted by a family, but he had a cosmic lineage. <laughs> oh, that's good to me. <laughs> if it ain't good to you, it's good to me. He had to find out who his spiritual parents were. We get stuck on just our birth certificate date <laughs> and where or whether we have one I did it too I did it too and sometimes we have to find ourselves not guilty first individually and then collectively and then cosmically I thank God for the those of you who are standing up today, who are preaching sermons in progressive ministries. But we have done a disservice. And we and some of us don't know, some of us know and pretend we don't know. But what does your soul how does your soul rest when you have to pretend that you don't know? When you have to fit in other people's boxes. I'm talking to the extraordinary of you. When you have to fit into other people's image of you. How do you sleep at night? Now, there is an art of being a shapeshifter. 
there is an art of being a bridge and and but you can't build a bridge yet until you do your own work I, i'm gonna go back to this business and this ministry thing a lot of you know we see other people who are standing up or who who's who are progressing but do we ever ask like how how long did it take you how many years did it take you listen i been doing this work since i was 19 years old when my 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 friends was going out partying i was married i was so-called nation building i was covered up i ate a specific diet when you do these things you activate certain things within you. You get exposed to information that cannot access you at a certain level of consciousness. And so therefore, we have to be patient with ourselves. I am, I am a Gemini um, by sun, by my sun sign. Of course, you need to know your whole chart to understand your fingerprint. When we talk about man, woman, child, know thyself, that is the journey. You can't, you, you gotta know yourself. So. When they talk about, you know, oh, I don't do nothing with no charts. I don't get no readings. A lie from the pit of hell. Let me tell you why it's a lie from the pit of hell. Didn't your minister break down the power what 2016 meant? That was numerology, boo. That is why you, you do believe in black, black girl magic. You believe in some kind of magic. Didn't he, didn't he tell you how many times to spin around the power of the nine? Now we calling it sweet 16, huh? Or she? You believe in it then. You just don't know because you, you're being fed, but you won't study. It said the word says study and show thyself approved. Not just regurgitate what somebody told you. Study the book that you thought you wouldn't read. Talk to the person that you think is beneath you. You know, because we become superior in our self-righteous indignation. My Baba, Pastor Willie Wilson, shout out to him. He calls it such a muchness. We so such a much. We're so academic that we can't humble ourselves to enter into the certain vortexes of study until we are in pain. And what I position to you today is you don't have to do it when you're in pain. You don't have to wait until your life falls apart. You don't have to wait until your heart is broken and your marriage is broken and you marry the same same man in a different pair of pants. He might stroke you a little different, but it's the same pattern. Your reactions are the same. When the friendship circles begin to break down, oh, it, it, what is your inner conversation about trust? Because these, the, the gifts, the fruits of the spirit are also magic or, or miracles, really. When I say I love you and there's nothing you can do about it, it's I couldn't love you if I didn't love me. I had to own the places that I hated, though, or was taught to hate or taught to um, disavow. The parts of myself that I had, I thought was wrong about me because of my lived experience. You are not your lived experience. You are not. And all these stories that we stuff down inside our womb that materialize as fibroid tumors, that materialize as, as and I've had that too. <laughs> I've been divorced. I've had I've had to be prodigal to walk or to leave something. I've had to come back to something. I've had to have relationships broken. I've had to heal the relationships. I've had to own where I was wrong. I've had to say that I was sorry. I have I've had to do all of those things. Sisters, we cannot be spiritually arrogant and be of service to ourselves and to the our community. There is safety in the multitude of counsel. Mm -mm -mm. Again, I thank God. I thank all my mentors, the ones who were patient with me, the ones who called me out, and I'm not done yet. So please be patient with me if you're watching me, if you've been watching me. Please be patient with me because God is not finished with me yet. 
she who has begun a good work in me. Hmm. So I'm going to wrap up. What'd y'all hear? What'd you, what'd you hear? Cause I could go on and on. I believe in miracles y'all. And I, I know magic. I know, I, I know, I know it. I know it. I know it. <laughs> and what I don't know, I'm willing to say, I don't know, but I'm willing to find out because you don't know what you don't know. So Iyanla used to say to us, if you want to be real bold about this thing, right? Especially ministers. Create in me a clean heart. Pray this prayer. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. I dare you to pray that prayer. Because out of, it, out of the heart flows the issues of what? I know my heart was broken for many years. And I called it something else. I sought refuge in one thing when I was really trying to, to, to get take cover from another thing. <laughs> but I, I thank God for that because my willingness to take the journey, my willingness to travel, my willingness to explore, my willingness to ask questions, my willingness to stay up all night studying, my willingness to go to the ceremonies, my willingness to be mislabeled sometimes, misunderstood sometimes, because again, I'm talking to the extraordinary. All of that made room for me to find me. I once was lost, but my, I got lost in my broken heart. And I called it other things. And the more I began to heal my heart, the more I began to make room for my magic. Of course, you know, sex, love, and money. It's magical, but it's also can be, it can also be miraculous because miracles are a shift in conscious, consciousness. We are, po we are, um, we operate in the law of polarity. We are paradoxes where both things are right. So nobody is being made wrong on this broadcast. You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. What ends up being wrong is when we start to judge other people, shut down, shut off, not even ask the question, not show up for one another. So yes, man, rock out that black girl magic. At first, you know, I thought that I was anointed and called to all people because I, I, I love all people. But no, I, I am specialized. I am by design called to black women to get reacquainted with their magic first so that you can access the miracles. So... For real, for real this time. I say that every time, don't I? <laughs> All right, y'all. Talk to to um, us and to your sisterhood and good girls gone goddess. Um, after we get through a few days of this, I'm going to share some things with you. Um, introduce yourself if you've never introduced yourself in good, girl gone, go, good girls gone goddess. There's a reason for that as well. I love y'all too. Thank you. Who's, who, who's here? I see some people I know. Now I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I come so I could just be a vessel. You see, I'm not, you know, every time we come together, we don't necessarily have to sell something, right? We don't have to sell. Oh, I see you. I see you. My people, my people, my people. 11 is an magic number, a magic number. <laughs> um, so um, thank you all for joining me today. Um, I love you. And there is not a damn thing you can do about it. Now I'm gonna show you Costa Rica while I'm. Let me show you a little bit again. Let's see if I can do it. Maybe not. The horses didn't come. Okay, so that's where the horses come. That's the horses. I'm sitting on my balcony. Good morning, Pastor. I see you, baby. See the mountains over there? Back there is San Jose. You can see San Jose. 
<clears throat> there's some mountains over there I don't know if so you can't if you can see them but I I, I only stay still because um I want to you know to be, make sure I have a signal I can't I can't do this uh, and walk like we do in the US as much right now I will be able to later so I'm trying to turn it around so I can greet you properly I wish you could have seen the cat that we've met. You know, cats are magical. But hey, I forgot to talk to y'all about the full moon. The full moon and the rituals you could do, didn't I? Dag. I guess you're just going to have to join Good Girls Gone Goddess. And then we'll talk about it in there. <laughs> that was a shameless plug. I love y'all. Talk to you later. Tomorrow, same time, same station.